Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna and now we'll begin the discussion of your main artery of the thoracic wall, the internal thoracic artery which is mainly lying in your anterior thoracic wall. So let me give you a little orientation of the figure. This is the manubrium, the sternal end of the clavicle that is forming the sternoclavicular joint. This is the subclavian artery and this is the sixth intercostal space. This is the sternum and this is the diaphragm. Let's begin the discussion by, I want you all to remember that whatever I talk about on one side, exact same thing is happening on the other side as well. So let's talk about the origin of the internal thoracic artery. The internal thoracic artery basically arises from the inferior aspect of your subclavian artery. So if it's the right, then it's the right subclavian artery and the left side, it arises from the left subclavian artery. So it arises two centimeter above the sternal end of the clavicle from the inferior aspect of the subclavian artery. So you should know the relations that two centimeter above the sternal end is its origin. And what happens next? The course is very important. It runs downwards and medially all the way down behind the sternal end of the clavicle, behind six costal cartilages. So all these costal cartilages, it is lying posterior to them and however it's clung to the uh, thoracic wall. So you can say if these are the six, six costal cartilages, it is running behind them, all right? So it is running downwards and medially two centimeter, at the two centimeter distance uh, from the lateral border of the sternum, it is running downwards and finally, it comes to the sixth intercostal space where it terminates. It terminates by dividing into its terminal branches, the musculophrenic and the superior epigastric artery. That's how it ends. So that was the origin, course and termination of your internal thoracic artery. The branches, the branches of the internal thoracic artery are camps. C for its branch, that is for cardium. So it's called the pericardiacophrenic artery. This will supply the pericardium and the diaphragm. A is for the, as I mentioned in the last video, the anterior intercostal artery of the spaces. And then we have M, the mediastinal arteries. Mediastinal arteries are basically responsible for supplying the remains of the thymus and the mediastinal fat. Another M is for the musculophrenic artery, which is its terminal branch. So what happens next with the musculophrenic artery is that the musculophrenic artery gives off the anterior intercostal arteries of the lower three spaces. And at the level of ninth costal cartilage, it pierces the diaphragm to go into the abdomen. And what happens in the abdomen is not our business. We only talk about the thorax, basically it anastomosis in the undersurface of the diaphragm. However, what's important is that it's basically giving off the last three anterior intercostal arteries and piercing the diaphragm. Then we have the P, P for the perforating branches. These were the branches that will supply your mammary gland. And finally, the superior epigastric, which is its other terminal branch. The superior epigastric arteries descend up to the level of seventh costal cartilage, where it will pierce the foramen of Morgagni or the space of Larry to enter your abdomen in the rectus sheath. These were the branches of the internal thoracic artery and an overall discussion of it. That was all for the video today. Thank you so much for watching.